Hi everyone, here at Meridian Place in Barrie, Ontario this weekend. Dear so. friends, what you need to realize is that those who make the laws become the gods of that land. Those who make the laws based on reason People are fed up, are tired the of these unconstitutional lockdowns. Destroying families, destroying livelihoods. They end up letting wealth become the gods of the land. Those who let medical doctrine become the laws of the land. They end up allowing medicine to become the god of the country. And friends, even when we just let the people's voice become the lawmaker of the land, it simply puts humans as the gods of the land. And we will always, as humans, choose to serve ourselves. And so, as a pastor, as a Christian, I encourage you with all of my heart, turn to the Lord Jesus Christ in his words and his law, and Jesus Christ will set you free. question, uh, you know, at these rallies or after when we're just mingling and we're talking, it's like, Ty, what do we do? You know, what, 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 what can we do from here? You know, it's great that we're all together. It's great that we come here on Saturdays and, you know, we express our, our love for freedom. And, you know, it's like I just said before Pastor Mike came up here, it's, you know, we, we, we can't just be Saturday patriots, you know, and we can't just be, uh, you know, we can't just come here, let our kids play, you know, freely, maskless, without staying six feet apart, 
just to take them home and to put them back into those ludicrous guidelines. It has to be something that we continue on throughout the week on a day-to-day -day basis. Because if we don't, then we're not doing anything different. You know, we can't defy just to comply. It doesn't make sense. So, you know, I had, I had the, I had the, um, I had the opportunity and the pleasure to speak at two groups this week uh, of people in the in the background that really want to hit the ground running, and we want to put together an action plan on how that we can uh, combat these these ludicrous measures. And uh, you know, and, and I and I hate I hate coining the phrase, but you know, Nike trademarked it, and it's just do it. Just do it. And just do what, Tyler? Well, just open your business, okay? Just open your business. Keep your business open, don't close it. No one told you to close it. Not anybody that has the authority that told you to close it. So keep your business open. And I'm gonna go a step further and take those mask mandate signs off of your doors. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that, I'm sure many of you seen the video. Uh, Shalu at the Simmering Kettle has decided to make a stand and she remained open. And uh, I'm not going to put her on the spot to ask her to come up here to share, but I'll tell you, I was there and it was encouraging just to see the community who was just standing by ready to pour into her. And are you going to be open today? You know, I just, I, I think that she is, uh, she's a testament to what would happen if you make a stand. They can write you the fines, they can tell you to close, but I just want you to know, I know a lot of you see what happened at Addison's Barbecue. And I want to promise you, and I, and, I, and I have confidence in saying this, that that was for theater only. That was so that you yeah. were afraid to open your business. None of that was real. None of it took place. It took place on TV, which is Hollywood. You seen that on purpose so that you were afraid to open your business. Just like Barry today said that the police were going to come here and they were going to arrest us all. Yeah, let them come. That let them come. You from being here. Yeah. Because they don't want us together. They want us six feet apart. They don't want us to see each other's faces. They don't want us to relate to each other. Because do you want to know where the revolution started? In the bars, and in the taverns, and in the churches, where we all were gathering saying, what are we going to do? So that's why they don't want you to get together. Because when you come together, nothing is impossible. Because even the word itself says, I'm possible. So when we come together, all of a sudden, it's limitless. And as long as we put God on the forefront, and we love our neighbors as we love ourselves, then everything is going to be okay. I know it doesn't feel that way. I know it doesn't feel that way. But I promise you that if you would just stop putting your hope into this world, and you start putting your hope in God and in Christ, that weight will be lifted from your shoulders, and you will have no worries. If you don't believe me, I challenge you and I dare you to try it. I promise you, you will never call upon the name of the Lord and not have an answer. He will answer. All you gotta do, hey look, it doesn't have to be pretty. You don't have to be a professional speaker. You don't even have to be a professional prayer. All you gotta do is express and share your heart with the Most High, and I promise you, He will meet you in the midst. The God of the, the, God of the mountain is the God of the valleys. He's not gonna meet you at top, He'll meet you right there in the depths of the valleys, and He'll exalt you to the tops of the mountains. A lot of you are probably going, wow, Tyler, what happened from last week? Where is this coming from? It's not coming from me, I promise you that. And all I did was I submitted to the will of God and I asked him to use me as a vessel because I don't want to be up here. I don't want anybody to come here and hear Tyler speak. If you came here to hear me speak, then I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is not me. You will not know my name and you will not know my message, but you will know his name and you will know his message because the truth will set you free, not Tyler. Pastor Mike up here because
because it's important that we let you know what's happening. Uh, if you've been here from uh, from week two, uh, I, I say week two just to pay respect to those who organized the first event. Uh, but we have Kristen Nagel here, who is the founder of Canadian Frontline Nurses, and she actually lost her job for speaking out to protect us. And uh, you know she's got a big she got a big event coming, and I'm gonna just have Pastor Mike come up and share a little bit more. But uh, these frontline workers, these nurses, these caregivers, these teachers, educators, these people in these positions, they need all the support they can get. So if we can, if we can show up to support Kristen, Sarah, Jessica, all all the frontline nurses who have decided to put their livelihoods on the line so that we can remain safe, I think it's important that we support. So Mike, go ahead, come up here and share with them. So when Tyler and I get excited about talking about Jesus, I can forget about other details. And uh, the one detail that you need to know is that this week, uh, on Wednesday, April 14th, at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., the Canadian Frontline Nurses are leading a protest outside of the College of Nurses of Ontario. <laughs> are being silenced and threatened. And so we deeply respect Kristen and Sarah, and we join with them, and we really want you to all come down to 101 Davenport Road, Toronto, Ontario. How many people have been seeing the banner go across social media for this protest? If you have been, go get online right now and reshare it a hundred times if you can. We need everyone from this protest to come down on Wednesday and stand with these nurses as they will be submitting a lawsuit to the College of Nurses. Please, you can go to our website, libertycoalitionclean.com, and you can read up on exactly what's going to be happening at the protest. Please come. It's this Wednesday, April 14th. At 11 a.m. Everybody yell at me, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. On what day? Wednesday. Awesome, thank you. I'm sure I'm going to leave that with you. Tyler, where are you? Okay. I'm just going to touch on this in between speeches a little bit because if I, if I could be anything, I just want to be an encouragement. And, uh, you know, back to Simmering Kettle, and I know there's other restaurants who are going to jump on board soon, but um, if, 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 we can, if we can gather on a Saturday afternoon, why can't we gather on a Tuesday night and go have dinner at one of these restaurants who need us to help them sustain? Yeah. How hard would it be for us to all get together and I know it's a little bit difficult, people may grocery shop sporadically, but like how, how do we how do we incite change in people? 
You know, and unfortunately, although, you know, Pastor Mike and I are up here speaking a lot about faith, the world is not in that state right now. The world needs to see to believe. So we need to show them so that they can believe us. So by showing up at a, at a I, I, like, I call them maskless shopping parties. You know, we, we, we've got lots of groups, but I would encourage you to get together with your friends, your family, and just show up together, but not as a group. So how we've been doing it is, is we, you know, Thursday at four, we pick a grocery store, Zares or Walmart, and you just start showing up, say, at four o'clock. Between four and 4.30, let's get 30, 40, 40 of us to fill the place, use your mask exemption, walk around, and you'll see people will start to remove their masks because there's a herd mentality on both sides of this. Many people wear masks because many people wear masks. And if many people don't, then many people won't. Yeah. So, I just want, I just want to encourage you, you know, it, it, always takes, it always takes someone to jump first. Am I right? It does. I mean, who, who, who here is the first one to jump off the cliff? That's okay, there's not many of me. You know, uh, when you were a kid, did your parents ever say, you know, when you gave, oh, well, Johnny said to do it. Well, if Johnny said to jump off a bridge, would you? Well, I always ask, well, I don't know, did he land? Did he get hurt? Because <laughs> if not, I'm probably going to jump. So just take, take, take people like Shalu. She jumped. She didn't get hurt. She's open. She's prospering. The community's pouring into her. And I bet you she feels better than she has in the last year. Yeah! So I also want to acknowledge the fact that not everybody has a small business. Not everybody has a small business. But I see a lot of small people. I see a lot of small people here. And we really got to start showing up for these kids. We really got to start showing up for these kids. But if you're one of those people that do not have a business, there has never been a more opportune time to start a business than there is right now. And why do I say that? Because we do not want to continue to pour into Big Box because Big Box is why Small Box is hurting. So if we can open our own, trust me, we, this is a free market. This is a free market. For them to tell you that you cannot operate your business and generate an income to provide a living, is downright wrong. It's wrong. So I would encourage you, open your business. If you don't have a business, open your business. If you have a child and you're concerned for their well-being, pull them out of the public school system. Pull them out of the public school system. Well, Tyler, I know that's a lot easier said than done. Like, how do I pay the bills? Trust in God to yeah. provide, and God he will, will provide. make a way. He will make a way. I promise you that. I promise you that. Put the well-being, put, put people back over profit, and God will honor that. God will honor that. And listen, in the interim, if you're like, well, I gotta get my two weeks, what do I do? I'll give you my address, come and see me at the side, I'll open a daddy dot daycare, and you can leave your kids with me for the day. So you can go to work, and you can do your thing, and I promise you, I will not indoctrinate them to be industrious employees. We need to teach our kids to be more entrepreneurial and to become more resourceful. Because if we just rely on the government, that's exactly what they want. They want us to be in a position where we're like, we're done fighting, we're done arguing, we don't want to dispute masks, we don't want to dispute stats. We just, just give us the shot and give us the check and let us get back to normal. Yeah. That is what they're trying to do. And I want to encourage you, you need to stand up against that. We have to stand up against that. There's a thing called informed consent. And if you do not have the proper information to make an informed decision to consent, then that too is wrong and a crime against humanity. I'm going to put him on the spot because I've seen him in the crowd. Would you guys feel a little better if you heard from a doctor? I know, I, at this point, you don't really need to research, okay? We're a year into this thing. 
we really don't need the research. We, I mean, we, we really don't need, you know, uh, experts on the panel to tell us what's what. I think everybody here has a good understanding of what's what. But to just reassure you and confirm you and how you feel about this, I am going to invite Dr. G to the stage, and he's going to share with us what's been on his heart. And I want you to give him a warm round of applause, but just in a minute, just in a minute. We just need to, we, we, need, we need some common sense, but above that we need compassion, and we need love, and we need grace, and we need to extend that to our human beings, our fellow human beings, our neighbors, our, our family, our colleagues, people in our life. When you are introduced to somebody, it is not by accident. You are introduced to that person on purpose, and you are to serve that person. That is the purpose. If you do not live a life serving a purpose, you do not live a life of purpose at all. And with that being said, I'm going to bring up Dr. G. Give him a round of applause, please. Good afternoon. What a wonderful afternoon. And it's great to see the momentum growing. Because truth will set you free. And this is what it's about. It's about seeking truth. Because we lost perspective. We have lost perspective as a society. You know, on the way here, I actually rode my bike here from Oro. What a beautiful day for a bike ride. But I saw somebody on a bike with a mask on, outside, without a helmet. Without a helmet. That's how absurd the focus and obsession and the fear has become. I say to that bike rider, if you get COVID-19 or any coronavirus, you have a 99.97% survival. You will overcome that. Throw out the mask. The virus is feeble. The virus is fragile. It will die from the ultraviolet light and the wind. You look silly. If you get hit by a car without your helmet, your chance of survival is well below 50%. But we have two parallel worlds right now. We have real medicine, and we have politics playing medicine. We're living in a world where politicization of medicine has taken over and has reached bizarre proportions. I want to just give you a little bit of a background. I want to make something very clear for the record. I grew up in Barrie, beautiful Barrie, hometown. I went to McMaster University to do a Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology. And then I went to medical school at McMaster, and I did a full year of clinical research and evidence-based medicine is what I studied. And then I went out to surgery in the University of Ottawa, I studied general in cosmetic surgery, and I was blessed, blessed to practice medicine in my hometown here for the last 25 years. In the last six months, I felt a strong calling to change course. Because medicine, as much as I love medicine and physical healing, it only goes so far. The scalpel can only go so far with physical healing. And so I felt the calling from God to pursue a Master's of Theological Studies at Tyndale. I resigned from medicine voluntarily. I spoke. I spoke in the December Dundas Street rally. It was actually the end of November in front of 8,000 people, speaking about the evidence against lockdown, the harms of the lockdowns, weighing the benefit and risk of the lockdowns. Three days later, the College of Physicians and Surgeons released a press release filled with multiple false statements about me. They literally said that I lost my license, I received the most severe punishment that a doctor can receive from the discipline committee. I've had years of going before the discipline committee. And a reporter from Barry Today, Margaret Booneman, published that. A complete defamation and a disgrace of fake news. Last time I spoke here, just a couple of weeks ago, Simple Dot Today, the headline was, Disgraced Surgeon Speaks at Rally. Yeah, that's how they work. I say to that reporter, look in the mirror. Yeah. When you're talking about disgrace, shame, 
get a balanced report. He did get one thing right though, and I congratulate him for this. He said, I didn't want to identify myself, I didn't want to talk to him because I mistrust the media. How they report and they bend and they twist. And they're all pro-COVID, pro-lockdown, pro-mask, and they ignore the science. But he did get one thing straight. He said, Dr. G didn't want to comment because he said, I don't trust the way you guys report. Would anyone agree with that? Do you trust the way the media reports? But I challenge you, if you're here now, I challenge you to correct the headline. I'm not a disgraced surgeon. I resigned voluntarily. With the college, when you deal with the college, there are always issues. I decided to resign voluntarily. There was no guilty plea, there was no loss of license, there was no anything else. It was a voluntary resignation from practice to pursue ministry. Anyways, putting that behind us, I got a wonderful, wonderful uh, message this morning from a patient of mine from 16 years ago. She had breast cancer, we did a lumpectomy, radiation treatment, she's now free of her cancer, completely cured. And she sent the word of encouragement to see, she said, Dr. G, thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you for speaking the truth. Thank you for taking the hit. Thank you for taking the abuse from the media. And thank you for standing up for truth, because in the end, the truth will set you free. I want to talk a little bit about, about research. I've had the honor of publishing about 10 papers in peer-reviewed journals. Strict criteria. When you're a scientist and you're publishing peer-reviewed literature, there's strict criteria. Number one, you have to be honest. Your data has to be honest. Your diagnostic tests have to be accurate. You have to be willing to engage in academic dialogue. And you have to be willing to have the scrutiny of the public look at this information in the science community. When politics plays medicine, we drop all those. And we go into a parallel world that has very little evidence. Masks. We have been told for the last year that the healthy are basically vehicles to transmit viruses when they have no symptoms. And they can tra transmit them inside and outside. False. Healthy cannot transmit viruses. It's just very simple. It's like if you're, if, if you're not drinking alcohol and you breathe into the machine, you're going to have zero alcohol level. If you have no symptoms, you are not carrying a virus. If you're not coughing, if you're not carrying an airborne virus, you are not going to transmit uh, bacteria. Lockdowns. Lockdowns have been promoted. But never in our history have we used lockdowns for any pandemic, ever. Simply because it's never been studied. There's no strong evidence that lockdowns are effective. You can lock down people as long as, as long as you want. There's no evidence that lockdowns prevent viral transmission. A virus will run its course. It has seasonal flow. And during this time of the year, thankfully, as Pastor Mike said, the viruses start to dwindle. We see hospitals every single year Emergency rooms have viruses, coronaviruses. ICU patients will have the vulnerable potentially on a, on a ventilator, but they run their course. You cannot eradicate a virus from lockdown. But this is what you can do from a lockdown. You can ruin people's lives. Yeah. And that's what's happened. And it's great to see people standing up and opening up their business. Because lockdown, small businesses are not transmitters. They're not super spreaders of the virus. You can lock down as much as you want, but what you're doing is you're creating damage. Do you know that when you lose income, there's a direct health correlation? There's actually an increased mortality when people lose their jobs and lose their income. There's a study by the Hoover Institute by Mr. Atlas, Scott Atlas, who found that the harm from lockdowns in a two-month period in the United States was twice as high as the harm from the COVID-19. There were more years of life lost from actuarial studies, more years of life lost from the lockdowns than there are from COVID-19. So politics plays medicine. You know what else happens when politics plays medicine? They up the ante. We're, we're technically under house arrest. 
Where in science literature is this madness coming from? That you're gonna arrest people, put them in their house, and eradicate a coronavirus. Absolute nonsense and insanity. I escaped from my house arrest today, and I'm glad you did, you did as well. Are any of your friends or relatives there under house arrest? No. Where in science literature does it tell you that certain products that you buy will transmit viruses and other products that you buy won't trans transmit viruses? So let's, let's tape off certain products when you go to the store and as long as you don't buy those, you won't get coronavirus. That makes sense. No, that's politics playing medicine. In the taping off of the products, so they did get one thing right. Somebody taped off the mask section. Yeah. Stay away from the mask section. And I know the reporters out there are going to say, oh, this Dr. G is anti-mask, is anti-science. No, actually, I'm not. I'm, let's call it a critical appraiser who has research background, who is extremely troubled by the new politicization of medicine that has reached epic proportions. I encourage you today as I conclude, do everything possible to share truth. That means you contact your MP, your MPP, Minister of Health, public health officials. I contacted Dr. Gardner four weeks ago. I'm still waiting for the data. I'm still waiting for the data. The College of Physicians and Surgeons wants me to make sure that you all know that I am retired from medicine. They sent me a letter saying, Mr. Gerges, Mr. Gerges, just to kind of rub it in. I have my medical degree. The college does not have the mandate to remove my medical degree. I voluntarily resign from medicine. And I don't know what kind of smearing will go on this week. And I don't know how many haters they can incite. But frankly, I answer to a higher calling than the mainstream media. I answer to a higher calling than politicians. I answer to my Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the author of truth. And I say in my faith, I have no king but Jesus. And some are saying we have no king but Caesar. We have no king but the government. The government will tell us when we can open the yeah. church. The government will tell us how many people we can bring in the church. The it's government disgusting. will tell us when we can take a sabbatical from the church. The government will even tell us when we can sing. How far away we can be from singing from one another. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. May God bless you as you speak the truth. As you share the truth. And as you stand up to medical tyranny, which is what we're facing right now, God bless you all.